All right, so to finish it off, working towards a finish, I'm trying to get a, a surface quality that I am happy with throughout. Not necessarily an equal level of detail throughout. And so I just want to kind of uh, see it from a distance and kind of touch all aspects of it with my hand and my brush whether it's at a low opacity or a high opacity. Because now I have a lot more visual information, right? A lot more color choices and pixels that I have done all by hand that I can steal from and use. And every time I do it with a lower opacity, I am creating more. And you can still, even at the finishing stages, be interested in experimenting with your colors, throwing in new kind of roadblocks, new things to react to. And if you're lucky, you weren't kind of schizophrenic through your process of trying to figure out what you wanted. But now you've really established your approach to this particular digital painting. Doesn't mean that that's how you'll always digitally paint, but it's what worked for you for this one. So now you just want to make the most of it in every area. And I, I've only used the one brush that I designed and I just have kind of let it be its own character. I'm adapted to its use. Changing colors a lot. Not just having one reference, but different stylistic references. I'm trying to find my own visual vocabulary as well. That can get me excited about it. And just like when we're using dodge and burn, or just like when we're using a lot of the tools digitally, we have a tendency uh, to overdo things. But with digital art, if you arrange it in layers, then you can always push those things that you overdid back, right? So if I double that up, you see how everything looks overdone. But then if I take the opacity down, I can decide, okay, that's that's not enough, that's the right level right there. And you can keep doing that with different aspects. I'm just going to zoom in really quickly so you can see. You can use the navigator for that. I really like in digital art with just your your brush because all they are, are pixels, right? So you zoom in and see the pixels and there's no mystery to it. But when you zoom out, ah, navigator is not doing exactly what I want. Here we go. And you start to see this kind of thing that feels so familiar to a traditional painter where you just have the edge of a, an old paint stroke showing through, right? At the end of the day, they're just pixels. So we find a way to make peace with that or not, right? And I can show you some ways we can work with that finish. But we're trying to make the most of those pixels, right? Understand the limitations of these tools and be as expressive as we can through them. That is the intent.
And even though kind of your own color choices, your own uh, kind of brushwork is all pretty similar to digital coloring, you can see how just the overall shape and edge of each stroke is so different than working behind line work. So that to me is kind of the essence of the difference whether you're willing to change your shapes at any time or not. Introducing a purple at the last moment. Direction of his hair doesn't quite work with the way that the hat is sitting. So remember that you can paint on the outside as well. And kind of cut it out. And by not using the eraser, just staying on the paintbrush tool and just stealing colors and just repainting when you've made a mistake, uh, it really saves you time as well. Okay, so before I start getting overly detailed and just kind of fixing things that don't really need fixing, adding things that don't really need to be added, even while I'm doing it, I can't stop myself. Um, it's a good time to remind yourself that digital art has more approaches than just directly putting down pixels. So let's play with some of those. Again, let's add some chaos into our process. Okay, so I've got this. How can I mess with it? A few more kind of scribbly lines here. Suggest details. So I showed you what I did with the rocks, so I can bring those rocks back, right? They're kind of cutting through now. I can push them forward. Push them back. I can do that with my layers of paint as well. Let's turn the rocks off. So one thing that I often like to do is take my top layer of paint, whatever it is, and then push it below some other layers. Let's see if that makes a difference. And what do I like more? Sometimes that can reveal kind of sketchiness coming through, which is helpful. And then you just leave it where you think it's best, right? So it leaves a little bit of accidental, <laughs> accidental nature. So now my refined painting is a little bit under some of the other sketchier layers. That's a way we can play with digital painting. We can do that with each layer. Bring it on top, bring it down below, make sure it's in the right place in the final estimation of everything. You can play with opacity. You know, kind of keep things softer. You can double layers up just by duplicating them.
you can turn layers off. Play with their blending mode. But the problem with that is it erases your individual stroke, right? So to me, that's a problem. If it's all kind of blended together with, with something else. So that's with the rocks integrated. I'm going to make a duplicate of that rock layer and then move it all the way to the top. All right, and then maybe move it under the hat. So to move it under the hat nicely, I need to combine all the hat layers. So that's another thing we can do in digital. I can do a selection of just kind of the hat area, kind of loosely. I can take all the top layers where I might have worked on the hat, put them into a group together, right? Command J that group so it's duplicated. Right click and merge that group so it's flattened all into one layer. And then duplicate the hat from there just to get kind of a hat on its own layer, right? Like that with all my painting. And then turn on those rocks, move it above, right? And then I can play with sizing the rocks, fitting them under the hat. Oh, they're already fitting pretty well. And then erase from the hat layer. So this is the first time I'm using the eraser. And of course you can erase with a brush as well. If I want to go to my brush, uh, because I'm using a new tool, I will have to set my shape dynamics again. But it's a good review. You want pin pressure. You want some size jitter. You want some angle jitter. This is just basics. You want some roundness. And then you could play with texture and the depth to kind of break it up a little bit. And that's usually enough. You can play with some noise if you want that as well. I'm actually going to turn that off for now. And now my eraser is the brush, as well as my paintbrush. And this becomes a new painting tool, the eraser, where you can control your edge by taking paint away. OK, so now I'm going to go on top of the rocks. with a new layer. But also remember, I can duplicate the rocks up. I can play with any layer. You can play with their levels and even their hue. So if I want to brighten their mid-tones, I think I do because I'm going to paint over the top of them. Deaden their shadows a little. And now I kind of know the, the way I paint, right? And I know the colors, I can steal them directly. So I'm just gonna kind of graffiti these rocks. By painting right over them. Hopefully with a lot of energy. And this is on a new layer. And that doesn't keep me from painting other places too if I want to kind of make the textures a little bit more complex. So I'm zoomed in at 25%. I don't want to ever go beyond 100% and then I'm just wasting time. I can push the colors of the rocks. 